uh, just uh, put the final touches to last week's game. Uh, after all said and done, I thought we played pretty well. We had some ups and downs, especially on the defensive side of the ball. We've got a lot of things that we have to correct. It's good we got everything on film. And uh, one thing I will tell you is we played awfully hard on both sides, and we got gassed on both sides. Uh, we uh, got very tired. There's not a lot you can do about that until you start getting in game shape. So uh, the intensity was good. Uh, we played a lot of players. Uh, some of the young guys that got in the game uh, made uh, a lot of mistakes that we expected. So it gives us uh, uh, a chance now to go out and work on uh, corrections and get our, everybody going in the same directions and continue to work on depth. I think that's the big key for us for the next six or seven weeks is try to get as many players game ready as we possibly can because it's going to be rough down the stretch here with only one open date. Uh, in seven more weeks. So we got a lot of work to do and some good, good and bad uh, uh, things that we could talk about. But the main thing is we've got the victory. I think everybody now understands where we're at and what we need to work on and, and going down the line. Paul Brown Stadium was very good to us. I thought it was a very good opening crowd. The students showed up. We had a record amount of, of students there, which really helped. We have five games remaining there. We want to continue to make it a, a venue for 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 uh, our fans, our alumni, and our students. And uh, hopefully we'll continue to get get uh, good crowds this week. Should be good homecoming, uh, playing a rival team. And it should be a, a nice Saturday night uh, college football game and, and great weather. So looking forward to that. 119th time that this game is being played, uh, the game for the victory bell against Miami of Ohio. It's, uh, been one of the longest running rival games in college football uh, last year. Didn't understand that too much. We go over there and play, and I tell you, both teams played hard, and it came down to the last four or five minutes, and that's usually how rival games are. Uh, they've gotten off to a start, which they'd like to had a few more wins, but, but new coaching staff, I can tell you this, their coaching staff has really changed the environment of Miami of Ohio. Uh, they are uh, – an open offense. Last year they were a one-dimensional offense of just running the football. They have have some players that now they can run run the ball, they can throw the ball, they have some very good wide receivers. And so they're giving them chance themselves a chance to stay on the field on offense a lot longer and score more points. Uh, defensively, uh, they got a lot of returning starters back. They have two of the best corners that we'll see uh, on our schedule this year. Uh, it'll be a challenge for us both on both on offense and defense. And again, being a, a rival game, a lot of our players know their players and they played against each other in high school. So that'll be a lot of fun. So we're looking forward to the game on Saturday night, our first Saturday night game of the year. And we're almost to October. I uh, look forward to our fans and our students coming back out and having a having an opportunity to, to have homecoming, alumni coming back to town, usually that maybe only come to town one time during football season. So. Should be a great night down uh, Nippert at the banks at Paul Brown Stadium, and, and we're looking forward to our second game and hope to improve. Questions? With Ohio State on the uh, a week away, how do you keep them focused on this game? I don't think they have any problem the way we played last year. In, in this game, we, we uh, looked like we were looking ahead last year, but uh, we uh, you know, we, we struggle to make first downs. We struggle struggle to score points. Uh, they got a lot to do with that. Again, there's a lot of pride over at Miami of Ohio. And again, they've got a new coaching staff, and they're fired up about playing this game. So uh, we talk to our players all the time about just don't worry about who you're playing. You better worry about how much better you've got to get each week, because we can't stay where we're at. We won't win a lot of games. We can't play like we did last week for about two quarters. If we do that, then uh, we're going to have a lot of losses this year. So we've got a lot of room for improvement and really not worry about who who the the competition is. Everybody pretty much runs the same offense and defense now. And uh, you can work and work against each other and try to make yourself better as a football team and as an individual player with your technique. Is it getting easier? Is it easier at all having a rivalry game ahead of Ohio yeah, I, I like rival games. I think it's good. It keeps your attention. It keeps the players focused on what they're doing. Uh, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're playing three in-state schools in a row, Toledo, Miami, Ohio, and Ohio State. 
And it probably couldn't work out any better for us to play all those non-conference games back to back where there's something on the line. There's a lot of pride involved. Uh, Toledo came in and, and uh, really, really played hard. And uh, again, they brought their band. It was, it was a big game for them too. So uh, we got their best shot and they got ours and, and it'll be the same thing this week. And then next week will be the same thing when we play Ohio State. You know, m most of them understand it. Uh, just the guys that's here for the first year. Most of them understand the, the significance of the Liberty Bell. Uh, Miami Ohio, I think, leads the series uh, seven or eight games uh, on the win column. So it's talked about by our players. Uh, we talked last week about Toledo and about uh, the last trip and last game that uh, Cincinnati had. They were five and zero, go to play Toledo and lose the game. So. When you play in-state schools, there's there's a lot more tension to it, a lot more tension to the players. You can tell the the excitement of them going out and playing because some of them's parents played against uh, against uh, in, are in this game maybe on one side or the other, and same thing this week and then next week. You said you didn't understand the rivalry last year. Did, that you didn't understand it fully, or what didn't you understand? Well, we we were just trying to find out what we were. Uh, as coaches, you know, we're the first year here. We're trying to find our way around, fill out, you know, what we have, uh, what kind of team we have. We played Purdue and played pretty well. We played Illinois and lost, and then we go to Miami of Ohio, and it, it was uh, it was a game where we were just trying to get our feet on the ground, not really worrying about the team we're playing and taking into account that it was a rival game. And I've never been in a rival game where both teams didn't play hard and uh, and get focused and really want this more than any other game that they play. So. It'll be one of those, you know, they're just down the street and, and you know, we recruit against each other and, and they look to the point of, you know, you know, they got a new coaching staff and they want to start it off in the right direction and I'm sure they want to get their best game of the year as we do. Sean Bond, he's day to day, you know, he'll practice, he's walking around, but, uh, you know, it, I, I was really pleased last week with our backup, Manello. He played well, he's played a lot of center for us in practice. Matter of fact, in two a days there for a week, you know, Deshaun was beat up a little bit and, and, and he played. So uh, we want to play both of them all year long uh, because it gives us uh, gives them some, some experience. I don't want one center to play every snap during, during the entire game. And so it worked out last week where he, he tweaked his knee. It's not anything real serious. It's just, you know, he had just a little bit of swelling in it, but it's, he's kind of day to day. And uh, Manella will start anyway just because of how he played and, and he'll be 100%. So the uh, main thing is we want uh, Deshaun to be available and, and practice this week and, and continue to, to work on your depth. Your depth at center position is, is about as important as your quarterback because there's a lot of time that goes along with that, a lot of, uh, a lot of communication. And so we want to continue to work on uh, uh, having more than just one center that's uh, played in games. Going back to Friday night, Uh, I was disappointed with our defensive backs. You know, we gave up. You can't give up that many plays in a game. I mean, we, you know, I, I, we can give up completions, but you can't give up uh, easy touchdowns like we did. And it, we allowed them to get back in the game. So uh, that was one area of concern. And, and experienced players, guys that, uh, you know, just didn't communicate. So it, and it was more of not effort, not anything other than just communication. And uh, that's what you worry about when you get the first part of the season is just guys communicating different coverages, who's got who, you know, who's got deep, who's got short. And we blew four or five of them, and they took advantage of it. So uh, that area was, was concerning. I thought, uh, I thought one area that we were pretty good is our running backs. Our running backs ran hard. Uh, they broke tackles. They got yards after contact. You know, we can brag about receivers, and we'll do that all year long. I'm looking for areas that's got to come through to make everybody better. And uh, question mark was out on our running backs. Teon Green's got to play better. I thought he, at times, he looked pretty good. But, you know, we're still waiting for him to break out and make those big plays. Rod Moore had a, had a few good carries, had scored a touchdown. So uh, it's all going to be on our running game. We know we're going to be able to throw the football. Uh, and the best thing that's going to help our passing game is going to be our running game. And uh, we shoot for 150, 200 yards a game. Now, we had that in the game. 
but we want to do that every week. And if we can do that every week, uh, it's, it uh, does wonders for your pass protection. And uh, it doesn't, you don't rely on your quarterback. You got to take, mentally, you got to take your quarterback out of it some. You can't go out there and say, okay, he's got to make the right call, go through the right reads, throw the right person, then make a great throw. I mean, you can't do that every, 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 uh, every snap. So when you get a running game going, it gives you the ability to let that quarterback take the snap and hand it off and, and, uh, and relax a little bit. And last year, we were able to do it some. Some games, we couldn't run the ball very well. But uh, we still want to be 50-50. And I know last week, we weren't that. But uh, we, we, uh, I was really proud how the running backs carried the ball, no turnovers, uh, went to the right spot, and protected. Pass protection was good. We're going to try to play all three. Uh, I, I, I think it's good. I think it's good to, to get them all. And again, we've got to get them ready for conference. This is non-conference games. They all mean you know wins and losses and, and goes towards your ranking and, and, your, and your bowl qualification. But the ones that make a difference are your conference games. And we've got uh, two games left before we start conference. And again, we're working to, uh, we're still working progress of the entire team. Uh, a lot of guys, the starters, are still just barely hanging on. It's good that we've got competition. We're going to compete in practice, and we're going to play a lot of players in games. And so it's, uh, it only makes you better if you play them. You can't go out there and say we're going to play you know, 30 guys an entire game. I want to try to play 50 if we can, if we can do that, and we can get uh, positive uh, results each week and, and get better. It's going to make us a better football team. So we're building every week trying to make us better. Yeah, and there's still competition. You know, John Lloyd it really improved from last year. The problem he did, he had a guy in front of him that it also improved, come back from a, a, a pretty significant knee injury to his punting knee. Now, we signed him last year from Moeller High School, and he comes in and has to have surgery. And it, he didn't really start punting until about four months ago. And so he took almost seven or eight months off. He's gotten stronger. Uh, John Lloyd worked very hard who did our punting last year, but it just came down to uh, thousandths of a second of get off time, uh, hang time, uh, and distance. We do all those three in terms of evaluating who's going to be our punter. And I was very proud of his first punt. Uh, he hung the ball up and, and uh, put Toledo inside the five yard line. Uh, he had one punt that we would like to have back where he shanked. But he also had a, a line drive that w was not quite as high. So he, he had a, an average night. We can't win big games that are going to be close with that, that type of uh, execution. We're going to have to do better than that. And the mid big thing is uh, give our punt uh, return, punt coverage team time to get down there. But Sam and, and John are working hard against each other. And hey, it could be John this week. Whoever, it depends on who uh, has the best Tuesday and Wednesday of practice, who will be our punter and kickers. You know, uh, uh, Gantz, our field goal guy, is, uh, has Tony Miliano right behind him. And uh, after missing an extra point, you know, that, that puts a little doubt in people's minds. But uh, he went out and kicked the field goal, which uh, gave us a 10-point lead, which really helped. So uh, I think we're going to have a, a good kicking game this year. It's going to even get better because of competition. Yeah, punters can save, save you. Uh, well, you got you got to be able to, to flip the field around and and and, uh, and 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 then of course the the distance and, and time of possession for people to have to score points. Uh, last year we didn't have a lot of that. Uh, I've had years where we <clears throat> pretty average with punters, and your your defense really struggles from it. And it also changes your philosophy in play calling for your offense, knowing that hey we've got the ball down to ten yard line coming out. You know, we, we've got to try to make at least one one touchdown. I mean, one first down. If we can make that, then we punt, and we're going to be a lot better off to give him room to breathe. But I've had I've had some punters that were so that were that were consistent and good that hey, offensive play caller said, hey, we can run whatever we want because we don't make a first down. This guy's going to get it out of there, and he, we're going to get at least 45 yards and good coverage, and we're going to get out of the get get out of the uh, uh, off our end of the field anyway. So. A uh, good kicking game really changes the, the attitude of your play callers on offense and defense.